Have you ever turned everything off? What was the last time you ditched all of these distractions and just sat with your own thoughts? In today's world, information is constantly spiraling around us. Thousands of notifying TikToks for you to see, millions of YouTube videos, countless of Instagram and Facebook posts for you to like and to forget a second later, and millions of books to read online and countless of podcasts for you to listen to. When you open up your TV, there are tons upon tons of entertaining TV shows and movies to watch. It's almost impossible to escape. Almost. And I'm saying almost because I know the solution and after watching this video, you will know it too. We have been trapped in this constant feeding of information. We consume it almost all the time. Like watching a TV show while we're eating, even listening to something while we're doing our work or we are studying, and even while we are cleaning our house, we are listening to a podcast. Not to mention when we are going to the bathroom, we are still taking our phone with us. Even in the bathroom, we are the crazy stuff. We are just so scared of missing out on something important happening and this flow of information never stops. So as a result, our brain gets so over flooded with information that we cannot think clearly or focus on anything usually seen as boring or unnecessary tasks. When I started writing out this video for you, I struggled a lot because my thoughts were all over the place. We constantly bombard ourselves with new information, even with my own example, when it still was really education. We try to take the time to sort out everything that is important in our brains, what's useful and what's not. But what begins to suffer is our creativity. It's much harder to come up with new ideas if your brain doesn't have any time let alone coming up with ideas that can like change the world and creativity is something i talk a lot about on this channel because i truly believe in my mind that is the driving force behind society's success and don't get me wrong it's not like i think we are losing our capability to be creative we are just not giving ourselves any time to be creative we leave no time for our brains to process all of this lovely information that we are gathering in our heads to put it differently to leave our thoughts to simmer in our minds so our subconscious can come up with new and fascinating ideas. We are most creative at times when we are not perceiving any new information, when we are in the pace of simply wandering the world. It's a well-known fact that great ideas come to people in the shower, where we are not distracted. Well, at least I'm hoping nobody's watching you when you're taking the shower. And if they are, it's probably a good idea to call 911. So anyways, after you called 911 and ran away from that really disturbing place, it's crazy to think that one day in the future, you might perhaps come up with a great idea in the shower. Because you decided to take some time off, you decided not to listen to music when you were in the shower, and just let the thoughts sizzle in your mind. Did you know that creativity hits its peak when you fall deep in your own mind? This is actually why Da Vinci used to stare at his paintings for hours, not doing anything. So this is because when you're doing nothing, your brain starts to work really hard to sort through all the information you gathered earlier and to put the information into the right place. I'm sure you heard that if you consume a lot of information over a short amount of time, it has a negative effect on our lives and we still don't stop. So here's a mind blower for you. People in the world on average use their screens 6 hours and 58 minutes per day. Crazy stuff. And the daily screen time since 2013 has risen to almost 50 minutes per day. For example, the average American, who I really do respect by the way, thanks for being here, consumes approximately 34 gigabytes of data per day. It's insane to think about, but it's true. So information overload isn't actually that new to society. With the invention of the printing press, for example, in the 15th century, scientists and scholars predicted that each advance in the field of information and how we consume it will produce an overwhelming flood of information that we just can't comprehend. Just imagine people in the 15th century who invented the printing press were overwhelmed with information. If we think about that, then we're basically how much we struggle now that we can read almost any book written in history at any given moment anywhere and on top of that constantly being bombarded with new information more information that we can ever process that decrease our concentration act really bad for our skill to remember things and eventually will take away our ability to be creative and make good decisions in our life so in neuroscience there is something called the working memory so this is a cognitive system with limited capacity to hold your information temporarily it's basically like your memory cache in programs like after so this part of the brain is responsible for reasoning, guidance of decision making, and ultimately our behavior. Put it simply, our working memory can't hold no more than 10 items at one time. So by largely exceeding what our working memory can store, we basically wear out the efficiency and quality of our cognitive function. So if you decide to overload your brain with too much information at any given time, then your brain starts losing this processing power and basically will overload your circuit. So as a result of this, we start to lose important periods of inactivity. The ones that we discussed earlier, the times when we do nothing. So when we keep the brain too busy, we deny the rest 
we pay the price of suffering with our short and long-term memory. Because communication between them two is disrupted by overactivity. And not only will you suffer to concentrate on a single problem, like to truly concentrate, but you will also harm your working memory and capacity. Today's world mentality will hammer home the fact that you have to consume information all of the time. But that is not the case. You don't always need to indulge in new information. It will not increase your productivity and it will not make you any happier. So FOMO, otherwise a fear of missing out, affects our lives really hard. It influences us to engage in as much information as possible. And yes, our brains can actually process 11 million bits of data per second, but let me shake you up a bit. Your conscious mind can only process up to 40 bits per second. Only 40 bits. The processing of all this information subconsciously is just exhausting. Information overload has actually been suspected of causing sleep disorders, anxiety, and reduced focus. So when you feed all of this information in your brain, and if it can't handle it, it releases cortisol and enters in a state of stress. Yeah. I personally do love consistently learning, experimenting with my limits, and multitasking. But while making this video, all my hopes and dreams of being productive while making this video were destroyed. We would all like to be productive. Like, be honest, you definitely would. You most likely wouldn't even be on my channel and clicking the like button if you wouldn't want to be productive. So there's that, to be able to do a lot more with less time. This is actually precisely the time when we turn to multitasking when we want to be productive. But I am sorry, I am going to break your multitasker bubble here. Crazy multitasker bubble breaker like I am. In fact, this is not so at all. Multitasking is basically the opposite of being productive. The best way to achieve your goals is to focus on the task ahead of you, one single task, and minimizing all the distractions around you and simply doing one task at a time. But forgive me for forgetting to wash the dishes, I still am a man, a simple man at best, and I do forget to mention washing the dishes. Yet there is a perfectly reasonable reason why I'm actually bringing it up. With easier tasks like washing the dishes that don't take up this mental space, as much mental space as like studying for an exam or something like that, then yes, you can multitask. A guy called Earl Miller from MIT explains this really good. Our brains are actually not designed in a way that they multitask well. When people think they are multitasking, they are just switching from one activity to another at rapid speed. And every time they do so, there's a cognitive cost. So by doing this weird jumpy behavior between different activities, you kind of create an illusion for yourself. But in actuality, it makes you less efficient. Sorry bro. Multitasking is information overload. It increases mental exhaustion and creates stress in our brain. So all of this actually confirms that you are decreasing the quality of your work. Fast shifts in our intention can actually really like run our brain out of fuel. And as a result, we feel completely exhausted after doing even the smallest amounts of multitasking. So by defeating FOMO, and if you can cut yourself out from this constant information that's like spiraling around you, you will gain a giant advantage against everyone else. Oh yeah. So trust me, you just need to be able to stay alone with your own thoughts. And the best way I found out how to do this is to learn how to be bored. I explained it all in this video. And yes, boredom actually did change my life the way I come across new ideas and in a fantastic way. So go check out how to be bored the right way because you don't want to miss out. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Gotcha.